Happy Saturday, everybody. It's AJ giving you an update. Now that I've implemented some changes to the tank, um, it's been about five days since I switched over to my new dosing strategy, um, and I actually just implemented the two part today. So I'm gonna go over that as well as the Zeovit and a little something extra that I haven't discussed with you guys, um, just to kind of take my tank to the next level as well as get me more knowledge and experience with LEDs. So. Um, go ahead and take a look at the tank. As you'll see, everything seems to be doing really well. The uh, tank's a little cloudy right now just because I kind of had to do some reprogramming with my Reef Keeper and updating and stuff like that. Um, I threw in a couple new standbys and alarms, and in the process of doing that, I was turning off power to the system uh, a few times, so everything kind of got kicked up um, when the pumps kicked back on on a high speed versus their battery backup mode. Um, but just take a quick look at the tank and uh, let me know what you guys think. I'm very pleased with it and I'll, I'm sure I'll be even more pleased here in, a, in the few next coming weeks, a uh, couple weeks to month. Um, we'll go ahead and take a look down here. So I've got the Zeovit reactor installed. It's running about two thirds of the uh, recommended Zeovit media. Um, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, as I figured in my original video, I figured this would make a lot of noise. Um, and it did, so basically what I did is I shoved one of my um, spare pieces of one inch piping up in that drain, or up in the exhaust to get the drain below the water line. However, it still does it has a lot of bubbles which makes noise. If it wasn't for those bubbles, you wouldn't even know the thing's operating. Um, if you guys have any tips on how I can get rid of the bubbles, I would love to hear them. Um, otherwise, I'm happy with it, especially considering the price point of like 130 bucks. I know it's not the best out there, but it, it gets the job done and um, didn't break the, break the bank doing so. Plus, I'm very happy with the Bubble Megas products, as, as I'm sure you all know by now. Um, so, we'll go ahead and take a look um, now. As I mentioned, I was switching over to Calc Wasser, and I actually just filled this up, guys. That's why it's cloudy. Um, into my auto top off, I'm doing the full two teaspoons per gallon, so there's 10 teaspoons of Calc, calc Wasser in here. Um, just because of, I was consuming so much calcium and alkalinity daily. So for the last two days, I basically just let this uh, evaporate and did not dose. I turned off my doser um, and I, 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 t I, tracked, I tested and tracked my readings. And this is just a quick outline. Basically, my alkalinity is over here on the left. I was getting, I averaged 7.56 dKH over these five days, um, which this is the first day after I kind of got everything stable, um, I dosed what I needed to, so I think that's a little high, so my alkalinity is probably a little bit lower, but uh, I really wasn't confident when I was doing my testing to get let my parameters fall for much more than five days. Um, so 7.56 dKH was my average um, carbonate alkalinity in the tank. 9.1 is my desired dosi uh, dosage level that I'd like to keep the tank at. Using the bulk reef supply calculator, that means I needed to dose 246 milliliters today, but I went ahead and divided that by five, because if I was dosing my normal amounts, I wouldn't have to dose that much, which came out to is 49.2 milliliters, but I just figured I'd round up to 50 milliliters a day. So I am dosing that daily as of today, uh, 10 times a day, which, let's be honest, 50 milliliters a day compared to 250, excellent, excellent, excellent. I am super excited uh, the only thing I've got to be concerned with now is my pH jumping too high um, which I'll go over that uh, here in a little bit let's go and take a look at the calcium now um, over the last five days um, just with the calc wasser I was averaging 382 parts per million my desired level is of course 420 uh, according to the bulk reef supply uh, calculator I needed to dose 311 milliliters to get it up to that 420, but I divided that by five again, just because if I was dosing daily, I wouldn't have to um, dose that full amount, which comes out to 62 milliliters a day, but I went ahead and just dropped that down to 60, so I'm dosing six milliliters 10 times a day uh, through the doser, and I'm hoping that will cut down on cost, as well as between just the slow evaporation and then this getting dosed a couple times a day or 10 times a day it'll keep my system very very stable um, so with that being said I'm obviously concerned about pH swings 
So I've obviously got my Reef Keeper. Uh, sorry, I got a big mess going on right now. Up there, and it's currently reading 8.09 um, in the pH. And I went ahead and set up some alarms that if it drops below 7.8, it'll alert me. And if it goes above 8.6, it'll alert me and it'll also shut off my auto top off and it will not re-engage my auto top off until it drops below the desired level. So that's that's a huge um, step in redundancy and just kind of safeguard it. Um, one thing I have learned is I think I need to get a new pH probe and recalibrate it. Um, I've had this one for a while. And the reason I think that is because I also wanted to tune my lights. So I went ahead and got a Senai reef monitor and it's reading my pH to be an average, uh, currently 8.7 and to be an average of 8.25 over the last couple days. Um, now, I really didn't pay attention to the instructions when I did this. You're supposed to soak the little um, tab for 24 hours in tank water before putting it in the monitor. I did not do that. So I don't know if I screwed myself or, or what the situation is with that. So I'm just kind of taking it for what it is. I gotta go get. I'm gonna go get a new pH test kit and manually test it here tomorrow. Um, but the main reason I got the Senai is I wanted to tune my radions. Um, some of my corals were browning out and kind of losing their color and not growing as fast as I had hoped um, since switching to this tank. And I assumed it was because my lighting was too low. But I would rather be on the safe side and have low lighting and not kill my corals overnight versus too high of lighting. So I started using the PAR meter and after watching Bulk Reef Supplies 52 weeks of reefing and doing a lot of research on this, I, I found for 200 bucks I, I really couldn't beat the, the Sinai. Um, I kind of wish I got the one with the uh, Wi-Fi capabilities just so I don't have to connect, have it connected to my laptop all the time. But um, again, for the, I really don't complain about it. So, um, obviously I still monitor my ammonia and, and temperature and everything through the Senai as well as my controller. And the temperature on the Senai and my controller are both spot on the same. Ammonia is obviously zero. Um, really it's the pH that just concerns me. But anyhow, so what I did is I took um, some readings of some of the corals that are in my tank. Uh, yesterday um, at 60% I don't remember what the numbers were but like my acros on the top they're at like 150 par um, like which is the bare minimum you can have for acros uh, and that was of course at the peak intensity and I don't have the peak intensity set on my aquarium for very long um, I use the radiant color uh, I guess lighting schedule that Ecotech puts out I just do that and don't mess with it so that was at 60%. Oh, it's going through. It's uh, refreshing. It's it's getting new information, which is kind of cool. But anyhow, so at 60%, everything was pretty low. Um, honestly, I was surprised. I, I wasn't surprised. That's why my acros were starting to brown out. So I started to increase it, and, and I tested it all the way up to 85%. And those are the numbers you're seeing there um, at certain acros, like the bonsai is at 259. Um, the yellow acro that I have is at, you know, two, so this, this is anywhere from... I think my overall readings were anywhere from like 50 par all the way up to like 311 par, which is perfect, I think, for a mixed reef tank, just depending on where I had the corals. Um, and this is just kind of a, a broad range, as you'll see anything from 90, uh, 65 all the way up to 260, which is perfect. However, I did that yesterday and I went from 60% brightness all the way up to 85 overnight. And my deep water acro bleached out overnight. It's not dead, bleached out. So I went ahead and turned uh, the brightness down to 70%. And I'll keep it at 70%, um, knowing that it's about halfway between what my tank was used to for the last few months and what I want it to be. And here in about two weeks, I'll increase it up to the 80, and then probably a week or so after that, I'll increase it up to the 85%. Uh, just to kind of get everything used to it. Um, I will give you guys an update here probably in about a month. Um, 
once my new dosing strategy has had time to take effect, I've had time to fully see the benefits of tuning my lights as well as I got it'll be time for me to replace the tab in my Senai um, just to see how things are going. Also the new fish that are up in quarantine will be in the tank. They're going in on Sunday or tomorrow and you will be able to see them on that next update as well. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, like, subscribe, ask me and I will do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. I do work full time so it's sometimes kind of difficult but I will try. Anyhow, everyone have a good weekend and happy reefing. Check out those badass clownfish.